chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Once again, I do want to say thank you to the men and women uh, in our congregation who have served our country in uh, one of our branches of the military. What we're doing today is only possible because of the sacrifice of our military, and hopefully uh, we can be an encouragement to you in the message. Hopefully we can encourage everyone and challenge everyone today. Matthew chapter 16, if you would please stand, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, If you're able, if you're able, please stand in honor of God's word. We're going to read verses 24 through 26. A uh, few verses, and I will, for the sake of my voice, luckily, uh, bless, how blessed you guys are, I'm going to try and make this quicker for my voice's sake. <clears throat> then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whatsoever will save his life, or for, I'm sorry, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what, prof- what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this message. Oh, Lord, again, I'll glory in my infirmities, Lord. But if you would just give me the strength to get through, the vocal strength to get through the next few messages and the week that I have ahead of me, oh, Lord, I'd be so thankful for that. To feel 100% would be a blessing, oh, Lord. But most importantly, that you be glorified and honored. In what happens today and in this message, I ask that you'd open up the hearts of the people to what you have to say to them, challenge them, uh, convict them, Lord, be at the invitation time that there'd be those moved to um, make a change. Uh, Lord, if there's any here that don't know you as their personal Savior, I ask that today would be the day they come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through the truth of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you for standing. I titled the message, It's Going to Be a Sacrifice. It's going to be a sacrifice. If I were to sum up the life of someone that is serving the military, I would, I I think I could safely, having never been in the military myself, uh, uh, safely sum up the word, or sum up the service as sacrifice. Any military veterans maybe would agree with me. If, if, If I were going to go, I remember contemplating going into the military and talking to my grandfathers about it, talking to other people in my church about it that were in the, that were veterans, and I remember they say, "Man, it's going to be a sacrifice." And, and to my in my mind, it's like this is the greatest thing I could do. And, and they say, "Well, it's a sacrifice." And then they, they start talking about it because, I mean, really, you, you start sacrificing the moment you get in, right? The moment you sign the dotted line, you get to boot camp or whatever, and you're sacrificing. Uh, we were just uh, I was just talking to the Ragsdales about their son Jacob, and uh, he lives in the barracks in D.C. Uh, the, the barracks in what branch is he in? Army, right? Okay, I knew that. And I was like, I was just thinking about how how much of a sacrifice that is to live in barracks. Uh, I've never been in barracks, but I've been in dorm rooms. And I, I, I say dorm rooms. I lived in one college dorm room for one semester. So what happened? I almost killed my two roommates, and so I got married fast. <laughs> Because I was like, this is not a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I'm not, and I only had two roommates, and I can't imagine that the barracks are much better. But uh, obviously, they, they sacrifice uh, really their wants. I mean, once you've signed the dotted line, you you are now property of the U.S. government. Basically, you're going to go where we tell you to go. We're going you're going to do what we tell you to do. You're going to wear what we tell you to wear. We're going to you're going to get up when we tell you to get up. We're going to you're going to go to sleep when we tell you to go to sleep. We're, you're going to do this when we say to do it. And uh, it, it, it's a, the, the classic joke of the teenager that's, I'm so sick of how you treat me, and I'm tired of how you think you can run my life. I'm going to go into the military. <laughs> You're just like, all right. You know, they, they have to sacrifice a lot of their pleasures, and uh, specifically thinking of those that maybe are serving overseas uh, or out, outside of this country. When you're outside of this country, you don't get all the same comforts that we have. Man, I love, uh, I love how comfortable, comfortable America is. And uh, one of the things I appreciate about like going to camp and stuff is it gives me a whole new appreciation of how comfortable my life actually is. Because if you've ever used a shower with a pool chain, you're like, God bless a shower that you can adjust to a temp- temperature. And but but you know, it, our our men and women that are in the military, they they lose a lot of those luxuries for time periods, long time periods, um, just because they're serving our country. They're sacrificing. They sacrifice a lot of their individuality, and I say, and, and you may say, well, no, nobody really cares about our individuality. All of us care about our individuality. Every one of us does. That's why we all wore the clothes we wore today is because we wanted to, we wanted to be individual. We all do our hair certain ways. You do your makeup certain ways, ladies. You drive the cars you drive because you like to be you. 
And I like to be me too. I wear my hair a certain way because that's how I like it. I dress a certain way because, and yes, I dress myself. My wife did not do this. <laughs> like, that's why it doesn't match. To, I figured it out. <laughs> no, but uh, they, they give up their individuality to be part of something bigger. And this is probably one of the, the hardest ones is they sacrifice being with their family. Yeah. Again, we're talking to the Ragsdales, just talking about how much their son just needed to see some family. Not that they're missing out on camaraderie or brotherhood or whatever else you want to call it, but they miss out on their family. I think one of the, the, the kind of videos, I, I don't get teared up or I don't, I don't really get emotional about a lot of things, but man, when I see the, the videos of, of, of veterans coming home to their families, oh, those get me. Those get me. Oh, man, when you see like a little, because I'll see a little girl that's baby Izzy's age run up and jump in her daddy's arms, and I'm thinking, I've been with Izzy every day of her life just about. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously there's been times I've, course i'm about to be away from for two weeks but but she doesn't know a life without me in it and and i see the wives that just ball and and and, and the husbands just ball and you think it just gets me because it man you, that to me more than anything that sacrifice right there if you your parents and your and your siblings and if you're married your spouse and if you've got kids your children to to sacrifice time and attention and 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 it's a, a huge sacrifice for their families by the way and let's not never forget about the families of veterans and and those that are serving and what they go through but but they really their life is if i could sum it up in a word is just sacrifice sacrifice and, and nobody, nobody, if I'm being honest, nobody boo-hoos for them. Nobody feels bad for them that they sacrifice. We, we, we most of the time forget. Today, there are men and women that are not with their children today, or their spouse today, or around their family today, because they're serving our country. Sacrifice. So... I know I've already said it a lot, but let me say it again. Thank you, veterans, for your sacrifice. In our passage today, we find out an important aspect of being a child of God and serving Him is actually sacrifice. No, to be, to be in the military, to serve our country, it's going to take sacrifice. But if I could sum up, and there's a lot of one words you could sum up church life or, or serving the Lord with, just like you could with the military, but if I could sum up serving the Lord, it would be sacrifice. Sacrifice. Look back at the, the passage with me. And I actually, would, I do want to give some context because we jumped right in. And, and I always take for granted sometimes when you preach chronologically through a passage, or you're preaching expositorily through a passage, you always are in the context. And I can always say, oh, remember last week we were here doing this. Well, you don't know what's just happened in our text. Well, here's what really has just happened. Jesus has just changed everything. He just informed his disciples that what they thought was going to happen is not what's going to happen. Because, see, they thought Jesus Christ was coming to, to, to uh, throw off Roman oppression and to rule and reign from the throne of David. And they were thinking they were going to get to rule and reign with Jesus. And then, man, maybe they had it all mapped out. He's going to make a big round table. I don't know if he make a round table. Make a big round table for us all. And it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. And, and Jesus just told him, no, that's not why I came. I actually came because I, I need to suffer and die for mankind. And, and in fact, this is the famous passage where uh, Jesus says that. And, and Peter says, let it not be, or something to that effect. In fact, I think I have it in my notes just so I don't misquote it. Uh, this shall not be. He says, no, no way, you can't die. You can't, you, this can't happen. No, Jesus. And Jesus says to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. So this is that famous. So he's just really changed everything. He's really just gone into, here's really, if I could summarize, Jesus just told them all that he's about to sacrifice. My life. My life for you. And now he's going to get into, here's what you've got to sacrifice if you want to follow me. Here's what you want to do. If you want to be a follower of Christ, if you want to be a child, if you want to be a Christian, here's what it's going to take. Look at verse 24. Then said Jesus unto them, if any man will come after me, if you want to follow me, it's going to be a sacrifice. But notice what he says first. If any man. It's a choice. Let me be very clear. This is a choice. Uh, there, Jesus doesn't draft anybody. Jesus doesn't draft anybody. And in fact, everyone actually has to make the choice. You say, well, I don't want to make a choice. Well, by not making a choice, you inevitably have made a choice. Whether you like to or not. Everybody from birth is, in fact, the Bible says, Jesus says, you are of your father, the devil. You say, I'm, no, I'm not of the devil. Well, here's the reality. When you were born and you were lost in your sins, you are of the devil. You have to choose to accept Jesus Christ to actually be saved. And so, if, letting us know, if any man, 
It is a choice that you and I all have to make. But if you make that choice, here's, here's what's important. If you want to make that choice, you need to realize it's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. It, it, there's going to be things that are, are going... And you say, well, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to sacrifice my life. Well, very much like those that serve in the military, they would tell you after the fact, it was worth it to serve my country. And, and everything I do for the Lord now in my life, I say, it's worth it to serve my Lord. And so, let's look at the first sacrifice back in verse 24. For if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Here's really what he's telling them. You're going to have to sacrifice your wants, your desires. You say, what, how, how did you get that? Well, uh, most of the time, sacrificing is telling ourselves no, denying ourselves. I'm not good at it. So obviously I have a throat thing going on. Well, <clears throat> it's been like a sinus infection and you know, they'll, they'll tell you if you drink, if you eat dairy, you drink dairy, it just adds phlegm, right? So don't do that if you want to get better. And, uh, well, see, but that would mean I'd have to deny myself ice cream. <laughs> so for the last three days, I've said, forget it, I'm having ice cream, whether it makes my throat worse or not. And uh, I was feeling pretty good this morning until I decided to try to fracture my larynges or whatever it's called, or lar- I don't know. Anyways, uh, but it's a sacrifice. We don't like to sacrifice. And many Christians are okay with doing church as long as doing church doesn't cost us anything. As long as I got nothing scheduled on Sunday morning, I'll be there. Hey, as long as, long as you don't expect me to actually like, do anything. Like, I, I don't mind coming and listening. I mean, I, I don't love it because, goodness, have you heard yourself? But uh, I, I don't mind coming and listening, but don't, don't expect me to actually get involved. Don't expect me to have to give of my time, give of my money, give of my energy. Don't expect me to put anything into it. You see, Jesus is letting his disciples know, if you want to be a true follower of me, if you really want to come after me, you need to understand, you're going to have to deny yourself what you want. The things that you think that, that are best for you. And, and, and I know as we get older, we understand that, that we don't, what we want really doesn't matter. I, I'm sure the military uh, folks in here can, can attest to this. When you get in the military, what you want really doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. Say, why it doesn't matter? Because it's not about you. It's about what the military is trying to accomplish, what our government is trying to accomplish. When you get into serving the Lord, I, I know this may hurt your feelings, but the Lord is saying it's not about what you want. But we understand this as adults. Like, my, my children don't understand this. My, my one-year-old son can't fathom for the life of him that everything doesn't just revolve around him and he doesn't get everything he wants. But as adults, we know not, we don't get everything we want. If I'm speeding and I get pulled over, it doesn't matter if I want a ticket or not. Yeah. He, he's going to give me one. Well, sometimes. I've only got a ticket one time. My wife, every time. <laughs> Men have it so great in the world. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not getting into that. Uh, but you can't, go to your, you can't go to your boss and say, hey, I, I, want, I, want, I, know, I know that my pay is X amount, but I want my pay to be like $400 more. And he doesn't go, oh, really? Is that what you wanted? Let's, let's go get this fixed. Let's go back here to payroll. Let's get you some $400 more. They don't care. It's like, not about what you want. Nothing in this life is really about you, what you want. And yet we think when it comes to church and when it comes to serving God, it ought to be what I want. God's saying, Jesus is letting him know, no, 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 you're going to have to deny yourself. What you want really doesn't matter anymore. So, well, that's not, that doesn't sound very encouraging. <laughs> no, really, here's what's great about what, what doing things, serving the Lord. You see, the Bible says, it's so funny, it says in the Old Testament that God will give you the desires of your heart. And so everybody claims that verse, well, I'm, I want a Corvette, oh, I, want a, I want a new house, and I, God will give me, I really desire it deep down in my heart. Here's really what that verse means. When your will aligns with God's will, all of a sudden, all the things that you want, He's giving you because what you want is within His will, and it's what He wants too. If you ask me what I want in this life, I have almost everything I want. Say so why? Because it just seemed to line up with God's will. Well, I, I was always that teenager, I, I knew it, young, young teenager, I was like, I just want to get married. Just want to get married. I, you could ask me at 13, I'd be like, I'm probably marrying her. And I forget whoever the her was, but in my mind, I was like, I'm getting married. Like, we're doing this. And then I serve the Lord, and he brings in the right wife, and I get married young. Like, it, Holly, I've been talking about, I think, 
I think in February it'll be like 14 or 15 years ago. I can't remember how many years we're going to have been together in February. It's crazy. I'm like, well, it's half our lives. We're about to be at half our lives. That's intense. And man, I, I want kids. I've always wanted kids. And then God says, that, that lines up with my will. And, and, and uh, I know you, you may not have known me long, but I've wanted to pastor pretty much since I was like 18. It's really what I've wanted to do. Like, I, I always said, oh, I'm probably going to have to be a youth pastor, associate pastor for a while. But what I really want to do is pastor. And God said, well, that, that works out. That aligns with my will. And so a lot of what I want has worked out, but only because it aligns with his will. And so here's the great thing about forgetting your wants is if your wants align with God's wants, odds are you're going to get those wants too. It's pretty, it is exciting more than you'll give it credit for. But he's also letting us know not just what you want. You're also going to have to give up. You're going to have to sacrifice your comfort because here's the next part. And take up his cross and follow me. So what does that mean? Does that mean we're all supposed to like actually carry around? Some of y'all would show y'all can't even pick it up, but... um, I still got it, and uh, my throat may be weak today, but don't don't be mistaken. I'm still there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, we're not. It's not a physical thing, but what it, but but what Jesus is giving us an example of is 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 it's a burden to bear. Uh, you're gonna have to suffer some things. You're gonna have to go through some discomforts to serve Him. Now, praise the Lord, because let me say it like this: because of our veterans and because of the men and women that have gave, served and sacrificed, and even some that have given their lives, we don't actually have to suffer too many discomforts in America. Nothing like our missionary of the month, the Duns. No, you, you don't. I've never tried to, to hold a VBS class in a bus quietly. Like have all the kids in the bus sitting down on the floor quietly doing stuff. No, I, 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 don't, I don't wonder if I try to invite somebody to church, if they go tell the police, I'm going to be arrested and lose my freedom. We don't suffer those kind of discomforts because of, by the way, because of our veterans and because of the men and women that serve and sacrifice. But it is, you're, you're going to have to be uncomfortable if you want to serve the Lord. And, and for the most part, discomfort in America is pretty minimal. But there is still some discomforts. Like what? Um, even as a pastor, I, I don't like this. I do not like talking to a random person and then asking them, if you died today, do you know for sure that you go to heaven or hell when you die? That's an uncomfortable question. That's a personal question, by the way. And I usually don't phrase it with, can I ask you a personal question first? I don't, I don't usually say that. I, I don't. But, but that's an uncomfortable question. And, God, and, and here's the thing. If you want to actually serve Jesus, you do realize that his mission is the gospel. His mission is everybody knowing about his son. God's mission is everybody knowing about his son. Jesus died on the cross so that all men could be saved. And somebody's got to introduce them to Jesus Christ. And that's an uncomfortable thing sometimes. In line at Walmart, there's other people waiting. It's not like it's not like Walmart's ever fully staffed with cash red or like with people in the cash register, so everybody can just get in a line. So you know, I'm gonna start holding people up. You could like you could feel the the glares. By the way, when you pull out a track, say, "Hey, I know you're at work. I don't want to take a lot of your time, but this will let you know how you can go to heaven when you die." And God loves you, and I, and I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. And you give him that track. You can like feel the glares of the people waiting in line. I'm like, you're about to write a check. Chill out. You're going to slow everything down forever. Chill. All right, I used a debit card. I'm a lot faster than you. Just give me this few seconds to say this. But it's uncomfortable. And, and, and Jesus is letting us know, if you want to serve me, forget about the things you want and forget about being comfortable. Um, uh, we can go into things like, you may dress uncomfortably. You may dress a little different. Why? Because I want, to, I want to serve the Lord. So the way I choose to dress and the, way I, uh, the things I choose to do, the jobs I choose to take, the places I choose to go, I'm not worried about my comfort. I'm worried about the gospel. So he says, if you're going to, if you're going to serve him, it's going to require that you sacrifice your wants and your comforts. Look at verse 25. Verse 25 says this, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Here's what he's saying. If you want to serve me, you're going to have to sacrifice your whole life. Now that sounds kind of crazy. And for anybody that's not a regular here, don't worry. It's not like we got a human altar back here that we sacrifice anybody. It's not anything weird like that. Uh, really, the best way to, to kind of give an example of that, well, maybe the military. You, you see, for some people, not every person that goes into the military, but for some people, when they go into the military, in a lot of ways, it's like they lose their life. As we just talked about, they sacrifice everything. You no longer get to choose what you wear, what you eat, where you go, how you do. 
It's just every, your life becomes somebody else's when you sign on that dotted line. It's the government. You are government issued at that point. And, and in, to us, it, we may look at them and say, you lost your life. You got no life. But to them, to some, maybe not everyone that served in the military, but to some, they may say, but this is what has truly given me life. Uh, there's some people that just know military is what has given them purpose. It has given them something. It has given them family. It has given them brotherhood. It has given them, it has given them opportunity. It has given them, some get their education through military. Some, some get their job training through the military. And everything about their life, they can say, it's because I gave it over to the military. Some would say they lost their life. But they would say, I gained it. Another example could... <laughs> I put this, I don't know how, how, how where, well it would work, but a marriage may be another example of that. In a lot of ways, the world looks at marriage like you kind of just gave up. <laughs> Marry one person till death? Brother till death? <laughs> That's crazy. And you may say, my life has never been more complete than with this person. So marriage could be another example of that. And so Jesus is letting them know, look, if, if you want to serve me, you're going to have to give me your life. But if you don't give me your life, your life's basically a waste. No, your, your, your life is, is, is literally a waste. You can live for 80 years on this earth and never accomplish anything for Christ. And even if you're saved, your life was kind of a waste. If you've never pointed anybody else to Christ, if you didn't raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and, and why others may say, why would you sign up to be a Christian? Why would you choose to go to church twice or two days a week? Why would you read your Bible every day? Why would you choose not to have these kinds of entertainments? Why would you choose to be faithful to your spouse? Why would you, why would you give money to the church? That's a crazy one that people are like, what? <laughs> but just 10%, right? Like, well, yeah, I give 10%, and then I give an offering, and it's, you know, it's there. And then I also give to missions, which is usually more than my, than my tithe. And well, what? Why? Because I understand that in giving my life, I'll gain it. Amen. My life will mean something. My, Amen. Everything can mean something. My kids can mean something. An example would be the rich man. If you go back to, it's in, it's in the Gospel of Luke, but the rich man in Lazarus. The rich man, the Bible says, fared sumptuously. He had everything he could ever want for in all of his life. He, he enjoyed all of it, but when he died, he went to hell. All the great things of this life don't, won't, won't, won't really matter. Amen. That goes into our next point, verse number 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? This one's very simple. He's letting us know you've got to sacrifice your personal stuff. Stuff. You say, well, what do you mean by stuff? Stuff. Uh, one thing, if you live in this world, you will accumulate stuff. Especially if you're living for yourself. I just, it, it's, it's inevitable if you're living for yourself, you're going to have some stuff. You say, why? Because what I want, I buy. Even if you're living for the Lord, you're still going to have some stuff. I've, Found that out. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll, I'll never forget, we moved here in two trailers. I got two trailer loads, my trailer twice. The second load was a lawnmower and a side-by-side. -side. So one trailer load really fit all of my family's personal things. One trailer. If we had to move now, <laughs> woo, I'd light a match, burn it all, start over <laughs> No, you accumulate some stuff. But, you know, we're never really satisfied with what we get. If you get a car, you know, that car is pretty awesome at first. And then after a while, you're like, eh, well, you know, this and this. And this is not great on it. And, man, if I could. And then something, somebody will come with something new. And you're like, man, if, that, if this would have been really nice. I didn't know they had this. If they had this feature in my year model, this would have been great. And maybe I should just upgrade and get this model so I can have that feature. And then you buy a house, you could say, this is my dream house. This is everything I ever wanted. And give it, like three years and you're talking about adding stuff, you know, like, oh man, I really wish we had a, a you know, maybe another garage and a shop and then a, a, you know, a carport built onto that. You know, if we just blow out this wall completely and just open up this whole kitchen and you're like, I thought that was your dream home like three years ago. Yeah, it is my dream home. But you know, I'm just, because we're never really satisfied with stuff. And, and many, and many Christians today put things and stuff before Jesus Christ. Well, I, you know, I've, I'd come to church more, but you don't understand. I got to work on the weekends. 
You're like, well, really? I didn't, I didn't know you, you had to work on Sundays. Well, it's not that I have to work on Sundays. It's just I work all, every other day of the week trying to make all this money. And so then Sunday's my only day off. And so I really like to use that to do this and this and this. And you're like, uh. or, you know, uh, you know, we got all this. We got the RV and stuff. And we like to go camping. We like to go hunting. Or we like to go do this. And we like to go do that. And, and, and you, you look at your life and go, man, really stuff. And Jesus is saying, look at verse 26. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world, what good is it if you live your life and you have everything you ever wanted? Imagine every vehicle you've ever wanted, you've got it. Every gun you've ever wanted, you've got it. Ladies, every bit of makeup you've ever wanted, you have it. I just say that because apparently that is like a super expensive thing. i not in that realm, obviously, because this natural beauty, I just wake up like this. Uh, but I'm not in the makeup world, but I've... Found out that it can be very expensive. And you get all that. You get, hey, the house you want, every house you want. You can have the vacation home in Aspen and the vacation home in Hawaii and your home here. And you can have, hang on, you could have, you could have every, you could, you could have gone on every hunting venture ever thought of. You could have every piece of equipment you'd ever want. You could, your kids could have everything that they've ever wanted. And Jesus is saying, what good is everything in the world and lose his own soul? Meaning you die and go to hell. What good is all of that stuff that you've enjoyed for 70 or 80 years if when you die, you burn for eternity in hell? I love the end of that, what he even says. Verse 26, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? You know, none of those things that that you've accumulated, none of those things you'll be able to trade later on to be saved. You could have a $2 million home. Say, so God, take this $2 million home and give me salvation. He's saying, you can't trade that for salvation. Nothing can wash away my sins except for the blood of Jesus. Nothing can wash away your sins except for the blood of Jesus. Now, by the way, let me just say this real quick. A little application here. If you're sitting here today and you're, you're a member of this church or part of this church, you're saying, oh, pastor, stuff, stuff is not my weakness. You know, I, I understand that material things are just material things and that, and that serving God is what's most important. Well, would your life reflect that? No, it, I know I wouldn't do it, but if, if we could look at your bank account statement and go through and see what you spend your money on. For you older folks, if we could look at your checkbook ledger. <laughs> Is that what it's called, a ledger? Checkbook ledger? The thing you, like, whatever it's called that you kind of keep. We write checks and we don't ha- even have one of those. We just write, because we only write checks to here, because here in the water department, that's the only thing my family writes checks for. <laughs> if I could look at that, and, 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 and let's say we broke down your budget. Where are you spending all your money? It's sad that most Christians spend more on streaming services than, than missions. Yeah. It's sad that most Christians spend more on dog food than missions. It's, it, it's sad that, that there's, there's missionaries and there's people serving all around this world. And by the way, can I just warn everybody, when I get back from the Philippines, I'm probably not going to be able to listen to any complaining for like... Because I'm going to go visit, because not only am I visiting Batangas Baptist Church, but I'm going to go preach at many of their church plants where these dudes are doing it for free. I mean, they're out there preaching on an island in whatever, wherever they can preach with whatever they get. And, and I, this is not what Brother Camacho has told me, but one of uh, another, uh, his name's Joseph Knuff, pastor friend of mine. He's told me that, that there, there are pastors in the Philippines that their salary is a bag of rice every week. And they're thrilled. Isn't it sad that that happens all around the world and most of us have more stuff than we know what to do with? We got more cars than we can drive at one time. We got more bedrooms in our house than we can sleep in or that our kids could sleep in. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying God is against your stuff and I'm not preaching against your stuff. It's nothing like that. But what I'm saying is if we looked at your life, would, your, would what you spend your money on reflect that it's not about stuff, it's about the gospel? My wife and I made a commitment years ago that the biggest expense of our life would be missions. Biggest expense of our life. We have four kids, two of them in diapers. Thank you for the diapers, by the way. We still haven't had to buy diapers for Lexi. <laughs> it has been great. I really, truly, thank you. But do you realize that with kids doing Christian, like, like, Christian, like uh, homeschooling, good curriculums, that's not cheap. What am I, I'm not saying that's about me, by the way, that's nothing on me. But here's what, one thing one day I want to show my kids. 
Look, our life is not about, our life is not about stuff. It's not about all the toys. It's not about all the guns. It's not about the big houses. And it's not about the, the cars. It's not about the nice clothes. It's not about all the things we want. Hey, let's, let's get some of y'all. Oh, I have all those nice things. It's not about eating out a couple times a week. By the way, some of us just gave up. And I don't care if you say, well, I'm just eating McDonald's. McDonald's ain't cheap anymore. The only place I can feed my family anymore that's cheap is Sam's Club. Well, I was going to say because I can get like, I can, I can get six pretzels for six bucks and just toss them at kids and they're just happy as clams. But if you just gave up eating out once a week or you gave up the coffee or you gave up the, 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 the sodas or you gave up whatever it is, I, I'm asking you, does your spending reflect that, yes, Jesus is most important, not my stuff? Or could I get into a gun safe at some of your houses and go, like $8,000 in here in guns. That's not ammo. Or maybe look into your garage or your garage and your carport and your lean-to and say, wow, there's a lot of money in here. By the way, I'm not doing that. I don't care. It's your stuff. This is between you and God. Um, one of the things, this is a very silly illustration, but one thing is my wife and I determined, and I said this years ago, I said, we'll never have a TV, and this was years ago, and I maybe should have thought about it. I said, we're never going to have a TV over 40 inches in our house. I said that because at least at that time, 40 inch was a pretty big TV. I think most people average 32s and like 40s was big. And then there's still like the 50s and 60s that like the rich people bought. Well, now TVs have gotten so cheap. Because <laughs> I've talked about putting a TV above the, above the sound room so that whoever's sitting on the platform can watch the video too of the missionaries and stuff without like watching it like this. And Holly's like, hey, Black Friday deal, 50 for 150 bucks. <laughs> like, why did I ever make that? And I said it to the Lord, and i got to keep my word, so we're stuck at 40 for the rest of our lives. But here was the reason I said that. It wasn't something weird. I just didn't want somebody to walk into our living room and go, oh, I see what you're all about. You know, because you've seen the entertainment series where you're going, dang, surround sound, 70 inches of screen, every kind of, you got the bars and all, that, man, man, like the sound bar and the, and the, the man, the nice, like, reclining seats everywhere and you're like Damn, this is nice and you know it comes with a nice price tag and I just didn't want anybody to say that about us I, didn't, I don't want my kids to get that impression here's some parenting thoughts a lot of parents try really hard to make sure their children succeed in this world and have a good life and you know grow up with all the things that they want make a lot of money but if they die and go to hell because they never trust in Jesus Christ what good was that? What good is that education and that job and that status? Jesus said you can have it all, but it means nothing if you die and go to hell. There's nothing you can trade for your salvation. We're about done here. <clears throat> Jesus told the disciples that to follow him, they would have to deny themselves, carry their cross, because this life is a loss for any who indulge in themselves. This life is a loss for any that indulge in themselves. The simple truth of this passage is this. The gospel is so important that we should be willing to sacrifice everything to spread it. Yeah. Deny our wants, deny our comforts, deny even give our lives, and especially give our stuff so that the gospel could go forward. We should be willing to do that because it is that important. Many here today are going to choose not to sacrifice, but instead to continue to keep the gospel and their service to God in the back seat, in the back of their mind. And uh, that's your choice. That's why we started with, if any man. It's all your choice. Nobody's drafting you. Nobody's got a gun to your head. But when you get to heaven, even if you're a safe person, if you're a safe person, you get to heaven, just understand that you're going to feel bad for, I don't know how many years, but a long time. Because you're, <laughs> I'm going to feel bad because there's going to be some little... Filipino pastor in heaven who worked his entire life for a bag of rice every week and served the Lord faithfully with a smile and joy. And God's just going to heap the, the, the rewards on him. And I'm going to get there and think, I did a pretty good job. I gave my life to the Lord. I served as a pastor. And he's going to say, yeah, but really? With your two cars and your house and your 15 suits and your, all your nice clothes and all your nice... Your, all your trips and your vacations. I'm going to say, I thought I did good. And he's going to say, no, that guy... 
That guy knew it wasn't about anything in this world. He was living for this, this next world. If you're going to serve our Lord, very much like if you want to serve our country, it's going to be a sacrifice. The men and women today that serve, served and are serving in our military said, I'm willing to make the sacrifice. Let me ask you today, if you want to serve the Lord, are you willing to make the sacrifice? If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior today, let me say this to you. You don't need to serve the Lord, but you need to be saved. You need to be saved. If you don't serve the Lord with your life, that doesn't really matter. But if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that determines your eternal destiny. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, we're about to have an invitation. And anyone that has any questions or would like to talk to somebody, if you just come forward, we'd love to show you from the Bible how you can know for sure that if you died today, you'd be saved. We'd love to show you that. Let's pray.